If you look like this when you look at yourself from the side, well, welcome to 75% of the population that has anterior pelvic tilt and left untreated, it can actually contribute to lower back pain and other dysfunction down the road. But the good news is I can help you fix this in just four steps. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, athletenext.com. So let's fix that anterior pelvic tilt of yours because in most cases, you're gonna wanna do something about it because ultimately it will cause discomfort down the road if you don't. It's easier to actually feel it though if you lay on the ground. Easier to see when you're standing, easier to feel it when you're laying down. If you can take your hands and slide them underneath your low back like that and actually get under your low back just when you're supposed to be laying here flat, it's a good indicator that you're already in anterior pelvic tilt. If you can flatten that out by squeezing your glutes together, squeeze your cheeks, and also pull in with your abs and contract your abs, now if you try to put your hand underneath, you can't get there. So how do we get to this position? easily by just understanding the four things that are contributing to that. Jesse, stand up. If you look at yourself now from the side and you're in this anterior tilt, you understand that there's two things that are tight and two things that are likely weak. In terms of the tightnesses, the first is going to be your hip flexors. If you look at what would happen, your hip flexors that attach to your low back and then run down the front side here, if they were tight, they'd pull you down like that into that anterior tilt, literally yanking your pelvis down. So a lot of sitting, can actually cause those hip flexors to start to get shorter and tighter. Look what happens as a result of that. The low back will arch and get tight. If you turn around this way, you can see that the muscles in this area here really start to cramp up. This can lead to a lot of low back tightness and soreness chronically. So we have to make sure that we fix this too. When it comes to the weaknesses now, if you turn to the side again, if you're in this chronically anterior tilt position, your glutes are not gonna be engaged either because what happens when the glutes engage? it pulls back that way, right? That's actually reversing the condition. Well, that's not happening on you now because you're in this position, so what happens is the glutes wind up becoming disengaged and weak. If you bend over and do an RDL, what will happen is if the glutes are not doing the work, then the low back's gonna do too much of that work. And that just contributes even further, so we have to strengthen the glutes. And the last thing is this protruding belly that you might see. A lot of it is not necessarily your fault. The fact that your belly might stick out could largely be due to the fact that posturally you're in this arched back position which protrudes the front side. But unfortunately, what comes along with the protrusion is weakness. So if we can strengthen the abs, strengthen the glutes, loosen up those hip flexors, and loosen up that low back, well now we can undo that anterior pelvic tilt of yours. Quick interruption to give you one thing you do not want to do though. A lot of people will tell you that you want to stretch out your hamstrings to fix anterior pelvic tilt. No. Though you're likely going to have tight hamstrings, they're more of a result of the anterior tilt rather than the cause of the anterior tilt. As you go into anterior tilt, it lifts the pelvis up higher and the hamstrings that are attached down here are just getting stretched further and further and further. So they're gonna feel tight, but stretching them is not going to fix your problem. Focus on the four things that I'm gonna show you now instead. All right, so let's start with those tight muscles. And the first one in my crosshairs is going to be the tight hip flexors. And my favorite way to do it is with this kneeling overhead reach stretch. So what you do is you get down, you lean forward into the stretch. The side that's being stretched is the one with the knee on the ground, all right? And when you get into this position, you can see that you're stretching out that hip flexor, but we can make it even more intense by taking the arm on that side, reach up overhead, and lean a little bit in that direction. And as you do that, you'll really start to feel that really good stretch down here. And the best recommendation for when to do these would be prior to going to bed at night, or if you can't do that, just get it in once or twice throughout the day. As long as you're consistent, you're good. Now, we wanna fix the tight low back too, and all you have to do for that is simply go from that position to your back, grab both knees, pull them to your chest. It's just a double knee to chest stretch. And you can feel that down here in that lumbar paraspinal area. Again, you're holding this two times for 60 to 90 seconds to really feel those muscles start to loosen up. So now with the simple stretches out of the way, we need to focus on the strengthening. And we start with the abs, but it's not just about doing any type of ab exercise because a lot of ab exercises actually overwork the hip flexors, which is just going to contribute even further to the tightness you have. So how do you strengthen your abs without overworking the hip flexors with specific exercises. And there's two that I want you to do. The first one here, you have a band anchored out in front of you. And you just put it back behind your ankles like that. Okay, now lay back, Jesse. Now you're gonna do a crunch, just a typical normal crunch where you engage your abdominal muscles, but before you lift, you pull back against the band and then you crunch, holding that hamstring contraction, engaging that posterior chain to reciprocally turn off those front side muscles or the hip flexors. And by doing so, now you force the abdominal muscles to do the majority of the work on the crunch. 
So pull back, lift, and go down. Each one should be very deliberate and intentional. You do these for 30 to 60 seconds until failure, depending upon your ability level. The next thing you do is you take the band off, you're right here on the floor. We do something called the swiper. Now a lot of times, let's show this wrong, Jesse, when people do leg lifts, they just lift their legs straight up like that. What are they doing? A lot of hip flexor work. Don't do that if you want to try to fix your anterior pelvic tilt. Instead, you want to learn to work your pelvis only. And we do a swiper. You want to just curl your pelvis towards your shoulders. And if you have the ability to slide your hands underneath, then you know that you've done it properly because you're curling. If you just lift, you're not going to be able to do it. Demonstrate a lift. If you just lift, you can't get your hands underneath because you're just using your hip flexors. Curl the pelvis up, use your lower abs, and then get underneath it just like that. Again, 30 to 60 seconds, depending upon your ability level, you're good to go. And that brings us to the fourth and last step of our little four-step plan here to help you with that anterior pelvic tilt. And now we're going after the glutes. Remember, they're weak, we can strengthen them with two exercises. The first one is just something we call a bridge and reach over. It actually kind of helps a little bit of that flexibility that we're working on as well with the hip flexors. And that's all you do is you simply take your arm, you reach across your body, try to reach over the opposite shoulder as you drive off of the feet. The bridge by lifting up and squeezing through the glutes is obviously going to strengthen the glutes. And again, that position at the top here is going to stretch out the hip flexor on that side. If you want to make this more difficult because you're getting stronger, really try to drive off of the back leg. If you're reaching in this direction, you're going to push hard off of the left. If you're reaching in that direction, you're going to push hard off of the right heel. Like 80% of your effort should be pushing through that heel, which will make it more unilateral one leg at a time and really help to overload those glutes. The next thing that you do is the sprinter stretch lunge. You grab a pair of dumbbells if needed. And what you do is get into a position where one leg drops back, okay? And this spot here, you've now got a stretch already if you stay nice and tall through this hip flexor on this side. Okay, so now how do we strengthen the glutes? Anytime you lean forward, you shift the load to that posterior chain. So right from here, the posterior chain is doing the work. The back is in a good flat position. When I drive back up to the top, I'm squeezing through here. You want to make sure you're squeezing through the glute. Don't just lift your back. Do another rep like that. Down, squeeze through here to come back up, drive. As you're driving forward with the glute, you'll be stretching that hip flexor on this side too. You simply do this about 10 to 12 repetitions on each leg for two to three sets. And just like that, you've got a simple attack plan that you can use just four parts to help you to start undoing this anterior pelvic tilt to start to get it more neutral and to start feeling a hell of a lot better. For those that are more visual and you want to see what it looks like here written out, here's a screenshot of the four simple things that I want you to do. Guys, if you found the video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. If you want me to cover more of these, make sure you leave your comments below as well. If you haven't done so, click subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, good luck. See you soon.